uh, good morning good afternoon and good evening to everyone who joined this webinar thank you all once again and thank you nidhi for inviting me uh, to take this session so i have prepared a, a very short ppt just to cover the basic uh, concepts and to keep this structure but i won't take much time during this ppt because i'm quite sure that the information that i would be sharing here is very easily available on internet uh, most of you might have heard about those these topics and points when discussing with your friends as well so my idea is to keep it more conversational more interactive so once i'm done with this ppt uh, you can ask your questions and we'll try to spend more time on the questions uh, can you or nidhi can you just confirm that you are able to see the uh, the ppt okay thank you everyone so this is the basic agenda i will just briefly cover what is ats exactly why it is being used how to recognize it what are some of the tips and should we only uh, should be concerned with ats only and then the question answer so uh, to quickly start what is ats it's an applicant tracking system as the acronym suggest and it basically evaluates the resume of the candidates and then ranks them in an order so if 100 candidates apply for a certain position it will check your resume against the job description of the position and then it will rank all those 100 candidates from 1 to 100 the recruiter based on the policy of their company would either then approach the top 10 or top 20 or top 30 candidates that depends company to company it could be anything and then the manual process of screening interviewing final interviews and the offer rollout will happen also one more thing uh, if i am going too fast or if i am not audible properly please do let me know so that i can slow down my pace so the question comes why ats and why now uh, i mean we were uh, able to recruit and manage the hr functions without ats for so long so why this 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 sudden shift which is everyone is trying to follow ats so the answer is very clear actually ats helps recruiters in dealing with huge number of applicants as the, the companies are progressing as the global market is opening and let's be frank as the population is increasing there are more and more qualified candidates for every position it's not manually possible for a recruiter to go through thousands of resume for single position when they have to of course manage more than 10 20 position at a time the second point is it makes the qualifying criteria more genuine so if if a recruiter or if a hiring manager or if every anyone who is in the business of recruiting people they go by their feelings they go by the qualitative criteria it can always be challenged you cannot quantify that but ats measure a candidate across some points it gives a total score which is more trustworthy than rather rejecting a candidate because a recruiter didn't feel that it would be a good candidate these two factors are the prime factors why ats is gaining more and more prominence you would still see many of the companies which are not using ats but the prime reason is the cost affordability ats is not uh, uh, i won't say very costly but it's not cheap either so any company which is very small in their operations or which is an upcoming company which is sort of a tier b minus company they would hesitate to use ats they would either use a third party recruiting agency or they would use job portals like nokri or monster in india or indeed and uh, other job linkedin in uh, foreign countries because they will basically try to do this first level of screening for them but any big company any major company that we all uh, know by the names in any industry they would always use ats now that brings us to the point how to know if a company is using ats or not the very first uh, clue is if a com if any job posting has a direct apply option so if you are on indeed and it has a direct apply option that would mean it's a 
it's not an ATS. But similarly for LinkedIn, if it if it doesn't direct you to the company website, but it says to easy apply, then it that particular company is not using ATS. Let me share and quickly show you one thing. Let me see if I will be able to share that. Okay, Nidhi, could you make me co-host, please? Thank you. Okay, so this was just a couple of website I was looking for uh, like in India just to give you an example. I hope everyone is able to see my screen. So if you see the HDFC career website, the URL says hdfcbank.com personal about us careers. Oh, uh, hey, Abhinav. But the moment, Sorry, yeah. Abhinav. Uh, it says, oh, okay, now we can see it. Because it said you started screen okay. sharing. Okay, now you can see it. Uh, Perfect. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Must be a lag. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Joe. So what I was saying was, uh, let's say these, these steps are already open. I've already opened them just for uh, not to waste time. If you see here the career tab when you uh, when you go to the SDFC bank site, it's doesn't it says SDFC bank personal about us careers. But when you click on the career options to actually look for the jobs and apply, the URL changes to SDFC bank careers dot The URL changes. That's the that's the first identifier of an ATS. Higher alchemy is an ATS. Similarly, if we check Oracle, you can see oracle.com in corporate careers. But when you again click on the search for job to look for jobs and to apply them, oracle.telio.net. Telio is again one of the ATS. So URL will change. That's your biggest identifier. Any company you look for, if you check Infosys, it will change to brass ring. If you look for uh, any IT startups, they will change to Bamboo HR. It's one of the most preferred HR for up and coming, uh, sorry, ATS for up and coming companies. Uh, your greenhouse, your SAP success factors. So the URL changes, that, that's the general idea. So any anytime if you just want to make sure, these are the couple of points you can uh, understand uh, to see that the company is using an ATS. Let me shift back to the PPT now. So I'll wait for a couple of seconds just to ensure that the PPT is being shared. Yeah, we're good. Okay. So now to the uh, main main uh, part of the session. What kind of things we should keep in mind while we are preparing a resume for ATS. So first of all, uh, I'm not sure if many of you remember, but there was a fancy resume trend couple of years back. Uh, the resumes were being made with design templates, font, they were even personalized services provided by Nokri and other uh, career portals to zinc up your resume with lots of effects and graphs and tables. ATS doesn't care about any of those things. So ATS, because it's a machine, it just takes the data. Anything that is in a fancy format or on a fancy font will either get lost or will not be populated or parsed as we say correctly. So the, what ATS says it, it should be all text based. It should be a very generic, very block way to pass on the information. So for ATS, always trust these fonts which are there in the system for long like Arial times new roman no calibri no comic sense nothing like that comic sense anyway you should always avoid it's not a professional font i have also read somewhere that some other uh, fonts like helvetica are allowed acceptable but i would say uh, just to be on the side of caution always use Arial and times new roman don't experiment too much 
ATS is at the end of the day is a customizable uh, platform. Any of the IT person would understand that. So it can definitely some company may spend some more and customize it to recognize all the fonts, but some may not. So just to be on safe side, please try to use only Arial and Times New Roman. Font size again to be on the safe side, 11 or above. Format doesn't matter until and unless it is specified. So again. ATS is customizable. Some companies may not use customize it to the extent that it can read a PDF. So they would specify a file format allowed. There's always that section. If it says only doc doc X, please don't use PDF. But if it doesn't specify, then you, you could use anything. Header and footer. So this is something which is definitely directed towards our Indian participants uh, because this is a trend that we in uh, our name location phone numbers and email id that we we are used to put this information in headers don't do that no header no footer just simple simply mention that on the top it will not read like i started in the mention no tables no graphs no fancy bullet just a normal bullet the standard bullet which is allowed in the uh, microsoft world if you are giving multiple skills, let's say a technical person is listing the length of languages that they know C++, Java, SQL, .NET, they should use semicolon and not comma because semicolon is used as a uh, identifier as an ATS. It's a differentiator. So it will pick them as four different values. But if you use comma, it will pick them as a one value as a long string of tests. I would Come to these two points in a bit, in two minutes. I will first cover these two points. Avoid acronyms. When I say avoid acronym, I am not suggesting you to expand everything. So common acronyms like MBA in your education or CPA in your certification, that's fine. They are acceptable. But if someone is, so you are mentioning your achievements, accomplishment uh, in the professional summary section, there do try to expand at least once. So if you are saying GUI, I have dealt with some GUI to improve customer experience of website, please mention graphics user interface, bracket GUI, something like this. Applicant tracking system, bracket ATS. After that, wherever I use ATS, I, I, I was not worried, I used ATS, but the very first instance, I explained it even though I was aware that everyone in this session would be aware of what ATS is. It's always a good idea to expand it, especially if that acronym is being used in your professional summary. No fancy heading. So this is again sort of a remnant of those days of fancy resume. Uh, people were using fancy uh, titles instead of educational experience. They will be writing my scholarship achievements instead of work experience of professional summary my rock star contribution nothing like that because again it is very basic it goes by the generic rules it will simply not recognize it if you have not mentioned professional summary it will understand the data but it will be confused as to where to put it and your data would go haywire. now again before i move to these final two points i have, i have been repeating this word again and again not parsing not able to put the data please uh, understand and i would say please because uh, i have just seen a whatsapp forward like a couple of days back about ats rejecting the resume based on some points so that was a good timing actually i can uh, clear that point as well ats never rejects the resume it simply ranks it the idea is when we say ats rejects that it will not be able to properly take your data and so your rank would be so low that you will not be called. It's sort of that kind of rejection. But it, ATS will never boot your file or application out of the system because you are not following some rules. Okay, never a rejection, just a rank would be low. A very good example of how ATS friendly your resume is to apply for a job. So, you can apply for any job to be honest uh, because you don't have to submit your uh, profile at the end so page one would always be upload a resume and page two is the actual sections 
and how the system has taken your data and put it in those sections. In that, you can match those that page two of the screen and your resume. If in the professional summary, all of your work experience have been populated properly, good. If all the points, sub bullet points are populated properly, good. If not, you can always do it manually, not a problem. So the question comes, if we can anyways do that in page two manually, why to focus so much on ETS? The answer is when you are applying in bulk or when you are actively looking for a job, you apply for more than five, six jobs per day. That's like a minimum after customization. That's a very low number I've meant I've mentioned here. You cannot afford to waste time every single time because of your ATS unfriendly resume to populate those fields manually. The idea is that for 80% of job postings, your ATS, your resume should be ATS friendly enough to parse all the data properly. I will just take a short break here. Okay. Now the final two point. These two are related to each other. There's a reason I put one in green and one in red. All this effort, all this ATS friendly resume, all this preparation will count for nothing if your ATS resume is not match, doesn't match the job description. Like I mentioned in the start, the ATS is ranking your resume. So the keywords in your resume should match the keywords in the job description. So let's take an example. Again, I would take an IT example. Uh, uh, apologies if not everyone here is an IT, uh, but I feel that that sort of be more common across the board. So let's say the job description has the word C++ three or four times in a different different context. Desired skill C++ must have used C++ to implement some project like that. And your resume doesn't have C++ even a single time. ATS would score you zero out of four. That's how ATS is scored. It takes the keyword. It sees how many times a word is being repeated in the job description. And that many time is the word is in your resume or not. Similarly, there are some keywords which are taken from a Resume, uh, from a job description. So for a finance pers person, things like uh, financial exposure, accounts receivables, those could be your keywords. For an HR person, recruitment, sourcing, those can be your keywords. For a marketing person, accounts, uh, outreach, those could be your keywords. So those keywords, how to get them? They would be in your responsibility in must have. So all the job posting, after their initial description about the company and what kind of a candidate they are looking for, there are certain bullet points which says a responsibility, what will be the responsibility of this job. And then they list what is the criteria or qualification which the job posting is looking for. So those points you should read very carefully. And that is what we call when we say customize your resume for every job. So if you are interested, seriously interested in that job, you have to read that job description very carefully, pick out those words, and then use them in your resume. That would increase the chance of your keywords match, increase the percentage, and increase your chance of being invited for a next round of discussion with the recruiter, with a human, as they say. How does that relate to the final point of no cheating? Uh, there are certain tips or advice which are circulated on the internet and on some uh, website also to which is very sad actually but the, they say that you can you know copy your copy the entire JD post it in your resume and change the font to white change the font color to white so a human will not be able to read it but because machine checks the everything it will be a hundred percent match and you will be called for an interview or they would say use it in header or footer. That advice is of course gone because ATS doesn't read header footer anymore. But the basic idea is 
try some shady trick to cheat ATS. Now, why you should not do this? The, the very obvious answer is cheating is never an answer. But even if you are so desperate that you are thinking that, okay, fine, let me cheat. Let me at least, I'm, I am very talented. I am not sure why I'm not getting interview. Let me at least get to a human and then I will dazzle them with my skill and they will overlook it. Uh, they won't. No one would. Let's be, let's, let, let me be very frank here. And the idea that somehow people would miss it again, that's, that's a laughable idea. Uh, to be uh, to be blunt here because when a recruiter would actually pick your resume any recruiter after a couple of experience in fact after six months i would say they are so accustomed of reading resume that they they really need only five to six seconds to just get a gist of the resume so if as a recruiter i have picked your resume my hundred percent number one candidate within 10 15 seconds i would be confused that none of the key wordings, none of the key accomplishment criteria are matching my job description. Why is this candidate number one in my list? And that would obviously lead me to the logical conclusion that this candidate did some underhead tricks, which would either lead to you being blocked permanently from that company or, uh, or, or on lesser instant for you on a lucky instance, just for that position. So please, if you ever come across some advices, do not trust them. Do not do that. Spend some time. It is tough. In the starting, it would be actually very tough. When I started customizing my own resume, even after you know uh, checking so many candidates' resume on ATS, I, I never personally thought it would be so tough. But yes, it, it becomes uh, it it feels like a chore to go through JD two three times, understand the words. It's a very long process and it gets frustrating after five or six job applications, but that's the way to do it. There is no other way. I will also like to cover one more point, which is not mentioned here, but they are called screening questions. So sometimes when you apply, especially over LinkedIn, when you apply for a position after your resume is uploaded, after you're done everything, it asks a couple of questions. They could be like, they are basically yes or no question. And there could be uh, like in Canadian uh, contest, if the company is looking for a bilingual candidate, it will say, do you speak French? Yes, no. The screening questions are one more step to ensure that system is uh, filtering more candidates. So the moment if you, for those kind of questions, the moment you click no, your application is rejected that there and then only. It will not go to ATS. It will not be ranked at all because those are sort of a must have qualification that job is asking for. Do you have CPA? Yes or no? So that means it's not just nice to have, it's must have. So if a person doesn't have CPA, it doesn't matter what else they have done, how accomplished they are, the application is gone that, at that moment only. They are called screening questions. You can always identify them because they would be uh, they would ask a yes or no question. To move on, this is just uh, I will keep that on the screen for a couple of seconds. This is just one of the templates. So again, if you search for ATS templates, you would find hundreds of templates. There is no good template or bad template. It's just that try to be uh, clean. A look should not be cluttered and nothing should be in header footer you can see the name and the address and everything is on the top just not as a header or footer and this should be the generic outline so you can have skills summary these are the typical headings some people leave out the summary but i like to keep it because ats actually uses a summary section also in many of the job posting so everyone provides a summary but if you have not used this heading ATS will again be confused as to what to do with this data. So better to give this also. One more point which I would like to uh, clear here. Again, in Indian contest, the things are definitely changing, but we prefer longer resume. The idea is the more the years of experience, the longer the resume should be. 
because we would explain each and every point that we did for that role and for eight or nine years for a person of eight to ten years of experience we would have six to seven roles the resume should be like five to six pages thankfully i have seen that trend is going down people don't do that anymore but many might still be doing that resume should not be that long at all if you are anyone with less than five years of experience you your resume should be of one page that's it should be it, it there is no justification of your resume more than one page if you have experience of less than five to seven years even candidates with 10 years years of experience can create their resume in one page again i understand it's very difficult when i uh, when i i started started resume was three page uh, could, same idea right i have done so much i have uh, how could I, how can I shrink my resume? How can I remove this point, that point? But as in it, it, I would say it's more like a practice kind of a situation. The more you apply, the more you customize your resume, the more you understand more of what kind of language people are looking, recruiters are looking, you are in a better position to shrink down your resume. And uh, the second point about resume, which again, I'm not sure how many of you have heard it or not. In the work experience summary, you should not inform the recruiter what were your responsibilities, what did you do, but it should be what you accomplished. So instead of saying something like, uh, uh, so okay, if I take my example, recruited over 1000 candidates in past five years that's something what i did it, it provides no frame of reference to the recruiter was it good was it bad thousand people for call center it's, it's a very normal number because call centers are a very fast churning high volume uh, environment but thousand people for a finance company that could be a big number because finance company doesn't see a lot of uh, attrition so instead of saying something like uh, recruited onboarded thousand uh, candidates in five years if i reword it as manage the entire manage the full life cycle of recruitment process to onboard thousand plus candidates within the sla to meet 100 percent of the target that would look better it, it is basically quantifying it is justifying that you know the target was met that's the main idea here so it provides more contest to the accomplishment. I've seen a resume of one of my friend who had forwarded to me. Uh, so again, he has also provided the number. It was helped top three US bank for cost effective measures uh, for $1.5 billion, something like that. And it was again, I could, I could I suggested him to just reword in such a way that uh, first of all to remove the words which doesn't make any sense which doesn't add any value and then you can just clean it and use it uh, managed the initiative to deliver cost saving for top three Canadian bank and achieved the cost saving the actual cost saving so instead of writing that a plan was to manage the project to help in client uh, realizing this cost saving, mention the word that you actually were able to manage how much. So if, if the project is of 1.5 billion and you were able to actually achieve 500 million, that 500 million would sound better because you would be able to achieve it. So that's the key idea. Your all these statements, one, two, three statements, these statements should be your accomplishment. No one is interested in what did you, uh, what you did. That's in the past. You, were, you did something there, you would do something here. That's totally okay. What you achieved in that period is more of an interest to the recruiter. And it uh, definitely looks good also. It provides more impact when anyone is reading that resume. Okay. So now I'll move to the final slide. So the point is, should we only be concerned about eight years then? Uh, my personal approach to this is that I always have two resume 
one is ats formatted very very bland very block and one is more uh, fancy i will not use the word fancy but it's like more structured kind of there have there are some tables i've used and then hidden their uh, outlines just to be just to give a more clean look it, it's more like this kind of skills so if you see skill 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 this one it's a more tabular format it's more structured the lines are matched things like that now why and where to use it so this second fancy resume as i mentioned it it can be used if you are directly emailing it to someone or you have printed it out and you are in a job fair you are meeting recruiters and you are giving them hard copies there no one is feeding it to a machine so it doesn't matter there you can simply use some maybe even some graphs maybe even some uh, table you can do whatever because you are sure that this resume is not be getting fed into a ats system ats is, is the of course of the second choice for all the reasons that we discussed now the most important part is it doesn't matter if you prepare a master resume for ats or a fancy resume the master resume which i mentioned is a resume which should cover 70% of all the generic job posting that you see so again here i would take my example i am an hr if i am uh, preparing a master resume for myself the one thing something which would be common would be my summary my educational my skills my uh, credentials soft skills is one thing which i can use 10 or 15 core skills so any one of you who if you are actively job hunting as of now or if you would start if you check 10 or 15 of job opening you would see some words that would be repeated again and again and again in those job posting especially for soft skills so things like adaptable analytical organizational skill communication skills a uh, motivator team player things like that they would repeat again and again and again they might not be in one or two job application but you would find them out of 10 they are there in 7 to 8 so that's that is your that 70% match criteria so if it if you see this word is repeating again and again rather than to customize your resume every time delete it then again add it then again delete it prepare a master resume that already have those words so when you start to customize your resume you have to only add a new skill you don't have to remove it it saves time the second thing in it helps is uh, when you are mass applying so uh, when i uh, mentioned earlier also that for customizing a resume it does take time it it's a lengthy process which will take you at least 30 to 45 minutes and that to once you are more practiced in doing so in the initial time it could take you an hour or an hour and a half just to tailor one resume so if you are hunting for jobs you cannot apply only five or six job per day and be done with it so the idea is you in your job hunt strategy there are certain jobs which you are not that attached to i would say not that you are like ambivalent if you get them good it will give you money it will give you experience but if you don't get them fine and then there are certain dream jobs that in they, they are very good they are matching your skill set and they are in a good company so for the first kind of job you use your master resume you log into a job portal linkedin or indeed or, or nokri or whatever and you just apply 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 done with like at least 20 25 jobs per day this is more uh, i would say relevant to the canadian industry to be honest for the second type where these jobs are to your for more far off your interest there you take time read the job description tailor your uh, resume and then apply overall if you use this kind of strategy for 6 7 tailor resume 20 25 that basically your entire day and this is one saying you would uh, uh, like see or hear from everyone that job applying is also a full time job you have to be very dedicated you have to be professional you have to give 8 to 9 hours in a day you have to take breaks in between you can't just sit and just keep up applying 
so if you uh, strategize like that you are you are you are maximizing your chance to uh, to crack in through and it's not not in this context of this session but if after one or one and a half month or even two months there are no results then you should definitely look at your strategy again look at your resume again maybe take help of some of your friends or if you know someone in the hr industry please approach to them because sometimes a fresh set of eyes makes all the difference you may believe that you have done everything that you could your resume is a plus five star but it could be missing some very key elements which is actually a hindrance in your job search so uh, that's all from my side i think i actually did went five minutes ahead of what i planned uh, but i would stop here and if there are any questions please do let me know and try to answer them